We're attempting to make over this kitchen in just two weeks. We gotta go, we gotta beat this baby. Which means we have 101 things to get done and very little time to do it. We have less than an hour to finish. If you've been following this series, then you know that this kitchen makeover is part of a larger challenge where we're trying to make over the main living spaces of this house in just 30 days. Because the homeowners have their first baby due very soon. And so far, we've been able to stay on track as we spent the first two weeks completely gutting and rebuilding the laundry what? room. What? It looks so good. Wait, this looks amazing. Then, with lots of strategic planning, we were able to completely transform their living room in just one day. <gasps> what? And now we've moved on to the last room in this project, the kitchen. And it's the biggest job yet. So are we gonna finish this before the baby comes? So to finish this project on time, it's gonna take everything we've got. Hurry, hurry. Will we win the race and beat the baby to the finish line? We'll find out in today's video because this week is our last shot. We started phase one of this kitchen makeover last week with a hefty to-do list that included removing all of the cabinet doors as well as the hardware, then cleaning and sanding all of the cabinet boxes, and then a whopping nine hours of painting on one layer of primer and two coats of paint. From there, Andrea got some raw materials from the home improvement store and actually built a gorgeous kitchen table from scratch. And with finishing all of those items last week, you would think that this week we were close to the finish line, but actually we're still far from it. And our to-do list for this week is even longer and we've got our work cut out for us. As we started into the final week of this project, we were hoping to make some serious progress, but little did we know, day one was not going to go according to plan. Little, little delay, we woke up to a water leak in our upstairs attic and there's just wall water coming down all the walls up here. <laughs> I just want to get it opened up so it can dry. We're probably going to need to replace all the drywall. I don't know. We'll figure that out. I just don't want it to get moldy. We've got a dehumidifier already from the last time we had a water leak. <laughs> that way while we're working today, this can be drying. It's just what we this need. This is what you, I was going to say, this is what you need when you're like in a hurry. Oh no. What even is this? When you're living in an old house, you sometimes discover that things were done in weird ways. No wonder the water is getting trapped in the wall so bad. They like textured and painted over wallpaper. I did not do that. <laughs> I repainted over the paint, but I didn't know there was like so many layers and stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at the water like. Ah, this is not how you want to start your day. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at this hole. <laughs> Whoa. We're supposed to be cleaning cabinets right now. Just taking deep breaths. We're going deep breaths. It's okay, it's okay, it's just walls. Do you see this bubble over here? <laughs> this is where I, I stabbed it with a pencil and a bunch of water came out. Look at it running down the wall. Holy and I was like, okay. <laughs> So is this a future DIY wife project or is this a, we call <laughs> yeah, it Yeah, we're going to have a hall makeover coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's good and bad, I don't know. It's just kind of one of those days, you know, you got a plan and your plan gets exploded by a giant leak. I don't know. Looks like we're getting a delayed start today, huh? Mm. At least we caught it now. I feel like it could be a lot worse, you know, if that was like, had been leaking for weeks and it was all like nasty and moldy because we have had that happen before and that was a nightmare. But good news is we're done with that for now. It'll get better from here. We can go finally start working on these cabinets. Are we ready? We're like, if we look a little bit like defeated, <laughs> today, now you know why. Finally, after spending way too much time fixing our problem upstairs, we were ready to get back on track until we ran into another problem. <laughs> I quit. I don't want to work today. So we had the first blessed heavy rain in what, two months, three months? Like three months. But yeah. apparently 
water sat on top of the tent and the weight of it actually made it buckle and break. Okay, let's just go. I don't, I don't want to do this right now, I'm done. Goodbye, broken tent. It just feels like one of those days, you know, where like the clown music is playing in the background. <laughs> you know? I don't really have any words. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's literally lunchtime. Go buy me some yummy food. All right, so first thing on the to-do list today is to go pick up a paint sprayer. So if you've watched our channel for a while, you know that I already have a paint sprayer. So you might be wondering, why are we going to pick up a paint sprayer? And the answer is, I get asked so often, what paint sprayer should I buy? What airless paint sprayer? The one that I have is so old that it's no longer made, and so I can't recommend the exact one that I have, and I don't like recommending things that I haven't actually tried, and so we are going to rent an airless paint sprayer close by to our house so I can try out a different one and we'll see how it works. So a few days ago we went on to rentalhq.com and I searched airless paint sprayer to see what rental companies close to us carry airless paint sprayers because not all of them do. And rentalhq.com is just so easy to use because you type in the equipment that you want, you type in your zip code and it will search all of the local rental companies to see which ones carry what you want and then once you find what you're looking for they provide the phone number and the website for that company so it's a really easy to get a hold of them if you need to. The rental companies are always really knowledgeable and helpful in showing you how to work the equipment and use it safely, which is super helpful, especially if it's not something you're using all the time. So we like using Rental HQ because I feel like it really simplifies the search process and I love renting equipment, especially when it's something that you don't use all the time. It can be a great way to go try out different equipment that you're thinking about buying or if you just have like a massive paint project but you're like, I don't need an airless paint sprayer, then go rent one. It just makes so much more sense to me and then you're not dealing with the maintenance and the storage of a large piece of equipment. All right, we got the paint sprayer. Next, we're heading over to Great and Alleys to pick up all of the cabinet doors and then take them to our house to spray them. Hey, Kiki. <gasps> Babe, no way. Be kitty. There's another kitty. Does this mean you want a little kitty, Liz? Hey, come on, it's just a scratch behind the ears. Don't play games with my heart. Next, we loaded up all the cabinets into the van to get them ready for their appointment at the cabinet salon. All right, cabinets are us. Who are you talking to? Hey, who are Bye. you talking to right now? She's on YouTube right now. When's your sister gonna start her YouTube channel, huh? I don't know. Speaking Go. of, look, she does the coolest furniture. Like, look at this, can you see this? Dude, when is she starting her YouTube channel? She's really good. Laura, you're really good. All right, so one last thing before we leave. I need to measure where all of the drawer pulls were to see what distance those holes are. That way I can just buy the same size hardware and we don't have to reach all the holes. Finally, we were ready to move on, but this day just wouldn't have been complete without one more hang up. So the only problem is I ordered hardware yesterday because I wanted it to get here the day before the reveal when we needed it and I guessed on the size and I guessed wrong. Baby doll. And it'll get here a day later, which means doing the reveal a day later. But you know what? After our day, we might need that extra day, so. <laughs> That's true. It's okay, it's okay. We're gonna reveal it sometime, you know, sometime before this baby comes, right? I'm like deep breaths, I need to just like not think about what my house looks like right now. Oh no. What even is Look at this? this is, holy mackerel, that's not good. I'm really trying to not stress. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making this up for you too. I need you to go get me some good food. I feel like that's what I need. You have never been more attractive than you are <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, well, we need to get the rest of our paint and materials out of here and go head to our house and start painting these cabinets. Oh Lord, I don't want to look at that thing again. All right, while Andrea is making lunch, well, I guess breakfast for lunch, my job is to try and get this thing cleaned up and uh, see how that goes. This tent was not working with me, so I had to give it the monkey business. I just feel like this ain't gonna snap back and hit me or something.
But in the end, I really just kind of had to admit defeat. I'm done. I'm sorry. We were going to the bathroom for a really long time. I was checking emails. The first step to get our paint area all set up was to get drop cloths out of the garage to cover the driveway. Then we were ready to unload all the cabinet doors and lay them out. All right, so we've got all the cabinets laid out, removed all of the hardware. Next, I'm gonna give everything a light scuff sanding with a 120 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. Like I mentioned before, I always like to do a light sanding before priming and painting because not only does it smooth out the surface and get rid of any imperfections, but it also makes the finish that much more durable. All right, I got all the doors sanded, blew off the main part of the dust. I'm gonna go ahead and clean them now with crud cutter. This one says it's pre-paint cleaner. I don't know if it's just the same as normal crud cutter, but any good degreaser is what you want for this step. It was getting really hot, and so I grabbed Dean's help to get all of these doors wiped quickly. All right, so the cabinets are all clean. Next, we just gotta get them up on these paint tripods, and then we are finally ready to start painting. Even though these triangles cost a little bit more than something like Dixie Cups, I do prefer to use them because they're sturdier and they don't blow away as easily as something like Dixie Cups. When Andrea got out the new paint sprayer, I got inspired to do a commercial for it. The Titan 440. It's big. It's beefy. It's surprisingly heavy. And it strangely resembles a grasshopper. After unloading everything, it was time to get this paint sprayer set up. You're an annoying little guy, aren't you? All right, got this thing all ready. We are ready to prime. I'm using the same primer that I used on all of the cabinet boxes, which is Benjamin Moore's Styx Primer. This is a great bonding primer and it's water-based, so clean up in my paint sprayer is a lot easier. The color we chose for the cabinets is Benjamin Moore's Revere Pewter, which is a beautiful light taupe color, which will help to break up all of the white, but still look really elegant and timeless. And if you've been following along in this series, this is the same color that we used on the laundry room cabinets. All right, the first coat of primer on the front is dry, so I'm gonna flip them all over and do the first coat of primer on the back of all of these. All right, that's it for primer. We're gonna let this dry. We'll bring it all in later tonight. And then tomorrow we'll get started on the first coat of the color, the pretty paint. After the sun went down and everything was completely dry, it was my job to bring everything inside so that it would be safe for the night. And then early the next morning, Andrea got the paint sprayer ready and we got everything back out to start painting the first coat of paint. All right, so we got everything set up again and we're ready to start on the actual cabinet color. I'm gonna start with the coat on the back of the cabinet doors first because then when I flip it over, just in case any of the little tripods stick, which they usually don't, but even if they do, it's on the back of the cabinet. It's not as big of a deal because you really want that perfect, perfect finish on the front of your doors. Is that it? Coat number one, so like glassy smooth. It looks so good. All right, so the first coat is dry on the back of all of these doors. So we're gonna go ahead and flip them over and spray the first coat on the front. The paint was going on beautifully and progress was coming along nicely until the wind decided to cause some issues. Oh no! Shoot! And 
once again after Andrea finished painting and everything dried for a few hours, it was my job to bring it all inside for the evening. All right, reveal day is tomorrow and we have a lot to do. First thing we're gonna do is get all of the cabinet doors ready for their final coat. And I need to do a really light sanding just to get any little pieces of dust that blew on, just a couple of them really, and then we'll spray on that final coat. Let's get her done, babe. We gotta go, we gotta beat this baby. You know what I'm saying? Hey, if the baby beats us, they should name it Speedy Gonzalez. What do you think? <laughs> Got them all lightly sanded. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe them off. Even though I blew everything off, there's still that fine sanding dust can kind of stick. And so I've got a microfiber rag. I'm just gonna quickly wipe them off and then we'll be ready to paint. Finally ready to spray the final coat on all of these doors. And it's a little bit windy today, which is not ideal. And feels a little bit weird because I feel like it's just been so hot and dry and I guess still that the wind is blowing and I was like, what is this? I haven't felt like a windy day in a long time. <laughs> I always like to spray on at least two solid coats to give a really durable finish. All right, got the final coat on, and while that dries, I realized I never did put a top coat on the dining table that we built, and so we're gonna pull that out and get the first coat of top coat on it. All right, for the table, I'm using this same satin wipe on poly. I love this stuff. It just gives, to me, like a really natural finish. Like, it's hard to see that it's even there, but I've used this on so many tables personally, like on a coffee table, the one that we had for like 10 years, and then also on a dining table, and I never, had to worry about getting like watermarks or rings on the furniture and so it just wears really well and I know that I like this for things like a dining table especially. After finishing up the first coat of wipe on poly on the table, we left it to dry outside and went inside to start assembling all the dining chairs and bar stools. All right, we've got some furniture to assemble. I bought dining chairs as well as new bar stools probably over a month ago now, but they are all still in boxes except for these two and need to be put together. So. After I assembled the first chair, I repeated the same process for the other three. I feel smarter assembling at the table and I'm not on the floor, but that's really just because I hurt my back on the floor last week. <laughs> After I finished with all of the dining chairs, I moved on to assembling the bar stools. darker wood stain bar stools at Target and I have used the chair version of these before so I already knew that they were solid and to me these look a lot more expensive than they actually are. So we're gonna have the wood table with the black chairs but then we'll have the wood bar stools at the island which has like the black countertops so it's not like too matchy matchy you know it's not like all black. Mm -hmm. together all of the chairs well I put together two bar stools because we need to go measure to see if we can fit three bar stools and if we can I have a third one that we can put together and on the way over to their house we decided to go ahead and grab lunch and Andrea couldn't help herself and had to do another one of her lame jokes yeah baby oh shoot it's hard regarding I'm an idiot do it again 
What's your deal? <laughs> I have real tears in my eyes from laughing so hard. <laughs> I should have kept it rolling because Dean got all the way back out and it stood there saying so hit the button but I was laughing so hard that I couldn't get the words out saying I'm just kidding. After lunch, we made a stop by their house so I could measure out where the dining table would go and get a better idea of how big I wanted the gallery wall to be. I also grabbed a few of their picture frames just so I had some options to choose from when trying to put together the gallery wall. After getting measurements, we made a quick trip to Target to get all of the last minute items I needed to finish off this kitchen. back ladies and gentlemen <laughs> time for coat number two so before I do a second coat of the wipe on poly I'm gonna do a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper the first coat always feels a little bit rough I feel like it catches little pieces of I don't know just the grain and stuff and so this really gets it smooth and then the next one is when the table starts feeling really nice and smooth. That night, we did one final coat of wipe on poly so the table could be ready for the big reveal the next day. Look how, look how good it matches the bar stools. Ooh, it's the night before. Tomorrow is the big day. So we're burning the midnight oil. <laughs> the 9 p.m. midnight oil. Hey, when that's you're, midnight for us. When you're a parent with kids, school age kids. I did just organize the collage wall and get that all figured out and I got the prints ordered and they're supposed to be ready first thing in the morning so and after doing this three nights in a row I was starting to lose my mind a little bit but in the end I made the most of it all right it's reveal day and we have so many things to get done today. The first thing on the to-do list is Dean is gonna go pick up the prints that I ordered last night at Walgreens. All right, we are headed to Walgreens <laughs> to pick up the prints. And of course, on a day like today, you gotta have your reveal day accomplice, right? Yeah, brother. Reveal days are always a whirlwind, so often Andrew and I have to split up to get everything done. All right, now I'm ready to start framing all of these prints and I'm feeling really proud of myself because I ended up using all frames that I already had on hand. So we're keeping this super budget friendly and then I printed these at Walgreens for, I think it was $34 for all of my prints, which is great because it's gonna look good now, but I also want Allie to have the option of switching out the artwork for either family photos if they want or just artwork that's more meaningful. But this is a great budget option that's gonna look good to you right now. I have done a number of these gallery walls before and I really just love the unique interest that they add to a space. All right, so next we need to load up furniture to the car and start taking it over to the Roberts house. And again, it's reveal day, so we had to divide our efforts and me and Asher took all the furniture over to the Roberts while Andrea kept working on other tasks. What are you doing in here? <laughs> you silly goose. The real test. I'm just putting these here for now. This is not their final resting place. That's for later. Asherman, we've been working hard. 
It's almost 12 o'clock. I, I think we've earned a good lunch. How about you? Yes. I say, how about we go to Chick-fil-A? Yes. Once Dean got back with the van, we were ready to load up the table and everything else we would need for this reveal. Oh, hang on. But we were running out of time, so we had to hurry. And we're in. When we're doing a reveal in someone else's home, there's always a million different things we need to gather. And you have to triple check that you've got everything because we don't have any time to waste. All right, final trip over there. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't forget anything. We are like for real running out of time. I just looked at the clock and it's like a whole hour later than I thought it was. It's, I don't even, I honestly for real don't know if we're gonna be able to finish this before we have to get the kids. Let's get her done. All right, I got all of the cabinets where I think they go. Like I said earlier, I did not label any of these, so you could call this an experiment to see how necessary that step is. Oh, that's satisfying, wow. Oh yeah, we're gonna finish in time. Look at that, perfect. Painting kitchen cabinets is always so much work, but now that I'm at the part where I actually get to put all the doors back on, it seems 100% worth it because these cabinets are looking incredible. Your hardware, madam. Thanks. Once I finished reattaching all of the doors, it was time to start installing the new hardware. I love getting to put the new hardware on and I've heard it said before that hardware is like jewelry for a kitchen and it is so true. It's just the finishing touch that really brings everything together. I found this hardware on Amazon and it was actually relatively affordable, but I love the antique brass and this really rich warmth that it brings to the space. Installing new hardware is always a fun part of the process and it also lets you know that you're getting close to the finish line, which is always exciting. Once I finished installing all of the hardware, it was time to bring in the new dining chairs and bar stools and get everything in place. This looks so good, I love this. Gosh, this table is so pretty. It's warm from being in the car. Next up, we're gonna replace the lights over the island with a new light fixture that we picked out and first step to do that is we need to go start flipping breakers off until we get this one. So we've got our cell phones out. I'm gonna go outside, Dean will be in here, and whenever the lights go off, we'll know that we hit the right breaker, which is a good way to double check. <laughs> This light thankfully ended up being really easy to put together. Before I could install the new light, we needed to remove the existing light fixture. This should have been a relatively simple process, but it was giving me quite a bit of trouble. Once I finally finished removing the old light fixture, I grabbed Dean's help to help me figure out the correct height to hang the new light fixture. Sorry, I think that's where I wanted to. Okay, so I'm tall and that's not like in my face. That's probably good, right? Yeah, you're 6'4 and it's not in your face, so that's good. Okay, you can put it down. Once I had decided on a correct height for the light fixture, it was time to install it. This should have been a relatively straightforward process, but of course I forgot my wire cutters, and so that meant I had quite a bit of extra cord to try and fit up in the ceiling, which made things just a little bit more tricky. Once I finally finished, it was time to turn the power back on and see if I yes. did everything correctly. Oh, that's it. Yep, 
Wow. Nice work. Wow, it looks so different with those up. That's crazy. All right, so next up, collage wall. I did take a picture of my frames all laid out and I left space for the light switch that's on the wall. I kind of was going off of memory on where it was placed. So hopefully I'm gonna compare it to my picture and see if the placement looks right. I don't do any fancy tricks of like hanging, uh, you know, like the paper and stuff on the wall first. I just get my, my one main center piece that's at the right height and then I just start piecing them around that. That's kind of my methodology. So you'll just see me start with the main <laughs> big frame first. So this is how I hang pictures is I put my finger on where the nail needs to go and then I hold it up where I want it and set that down. You are a pro. <laughs> the good thing about a more like eclectic collage wall and not one that's like, you know, a really straight grid is if you're off by like an eighth of an inch, it usually doesn't matter that much, but. The gallery wall was coming along nicely, but I had to hurry because Grant and Allie were already on their way home to see their new kitchen. When it's crunch time, this is where Andrea shines. She spends weeks and weeks preparing for these makeovers. And when it comes down to the wire, She's ready to go. Yeah, this is looking so good. I'm so glad we almost didn't do this because it was such a last minute decision with everything else. It just felt a little bit overwhelming trying to figure out what to do on this wall, but good job, Dean. Dean was like, no, you gotta do it. Do the gallery wall. You're Thanks, welcome. babe. You're welcome. Luckily, we finished just in time, and finally, after two weeks and a lot of hard work, we were ready to reveal this kitchen to Grant and Allie. All right, you can open your eyes in three, two, one. Well, how incredible does this kitchen look? And I just love the way it fits in with the whole house design. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I love the way the kitchen turned out and I really do, I agree. It just goes with the rest of their house. Like not only does it tie into the laundry room, of course, because you use the same paint color, but it ties in with the living room perfectly. And I feel like that open space just flows together and it fits their style perfectly, which honestly, that's what we were going for and that's what we want in the end. One part I really love that I wasn't honestly expecting to be such a highlight for me was the dining table and the gallery wall, which, happened because of you. I was perfectly okay just going, you know what, we don't have time. The wall's gonna be blank and it is what it is. But Dean said, you can do it. Just do a gallery wall there, that would look great. And so we made it happen and I am so happy we did. Like, it looks so good. And I have to say one of my favorite parts is the drawer pulls. Those are so <laughs> Those are beautiful. Fun. The color is amazing and it goes with the cabinet color beautifully. Yeah. And so now looking back over the whole house makeover, I just love the way the laundry room turned out. I think it's an incredibly beautiful and functional space. And then being able to take their living room from a blank slate into something truly cozy and inviting. And finally making over this kitchen and really just making the whole house fit together. Seeing the overall makeover, I know it's had a huge impact on their home and I can't wait for them to bring home their brand new baby into this beautiful, beautiful space. So thanks for coming along for the ride in this 30 day home makeover. We're going to take a few weeks off and then get into our next project, which is going to be very exciting. So we'll see you in a few weeks.
Close your mouth a little bit. <laughs> yep. Oh shoot, I thought you got another one below it. Drop it! Fill that water up. <laughs> it's exciting. Woo! Colored cabinets. That sorry. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Hey, this is hard. You people think it's easy. It's hard. It's super hard. What's going on now? Just waiting on my peeing husband. <laughs> I'm my peeing husband. Pee! Pico boy. We've all got to use the bathroom sometimes, okay? <laughs> yeah, I just got that on film. Not even kidding. He's really fascinated by what you're doing. He's watching me craft. He's like, wow, I love crafting. Our oldest, she saw this last night and she thought this was like the stock photo that they sell in the frame. <laughs> nice. They're so cute. Shoot, man. They found me. They're after me. Dude, bro. Okay, fine. You're on YouTube. There. You're welcome. I love you, too. No, you, you are actually too kind. Stop, please. I, stop. You little son of a gun.